Joining us now is Pamela Griffith-Jones, and she is the Chief Marketing and Commercial Officer for the GTAA, the Greater Toronto Airports Authority. Welcome to TVO. Thank you, Steve. Let's just start simple. What's the GTAA and what do you do? Well, uh, it's the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, uh, and I'm accountable for effectively all the business and the marketing for, for the airport. The airport or all of the airports? Uh, the airport, which is Toronto Pearson International Airport. So there the is island, just one. There's no, just one. Billy Bishop, you don't deal with no, the island. Somebody else's. You're all about Pearson. Yeah. Okay, but the assumption is if you're trying to rebrand Pearson, you're rebranding it from something to something. So let's first find out what the from it was. What do you think Pearson's old brand was? Well, really, I mean, the, the, the rebranding is, is first focused on our goal of becoming North America's international hub. So the rebranding is just really a visual representation of that strategic objective that, that, we, have, that we have set for ourselves. Uh, and, and that really is stemming, you know, why do we want to do that? Uh, because we think we have a lot of untapped potential, uh, of growth potential for us as an airport. Uh, and that really, if we're going to grow, we needed to make sure that we had a, a really clear position as to why somebody would want to choose to fly through Toronto, either as a passenger, but also as an airline. Why would you choose uh, Toronto Pearson as a place to, to, uh, to fly into? So previously, we had no pretensions about being the North American hub for people's no, travels. No, I mean, we, we were, we're Canada's largest airport uh, by, by a factor of almost two. So you know, lots of folks have, uh, and air, you know, airlines have chosen to fly through Toronto. Uh, but you know, really, the rebranding and the strategy is re in recognition that uh, customers, whether they be our airlines or our passengers, have choice. Uh, whether that that's locally, uh, people have other choices to fly through other than just Toronto. Uh, and for airlines, they have choices as to where they want to place their aircraft. And and given that choice and given that competitive reality, we needed to be sure that we were clear about why you should choose to fly through Toronto Pearson. And I don't think that was perhaps as clear as it could have been uh, previously. Gotcha. It, now, I always thought Hartsfield in Atlanta was the number one airport. Is that right? Uh, and, that is cor uh, correct. But we're in not in competition with them. No. Uh, you know, our goal is to be the international hub for, for North America. So we currently are fourth in terms of international traffic in North America. We're fourth. Fourth. Behind? Uh, behind Miami, uh, Atlanta, and uh, sorry, JFK, Miami, oh. and uh, Los Angeles. O'Hare's not in there. Chicago's not in there. Not from an international traffic oh, okay. perspective. Okay. So you know there are a lot of large domestic hubs. You can imagine uh, the U.S. is a you know, large nation with a lot of airports, with a lot of domestic traffic. Uh, and our goal is really to be that, that international portal between you know North America and the rest of the world. Gotcha. How long has the rebrand been in the works? Well, the strategic change has been in the place for uh, about 18 months now. So again, it really started with let's be clear about what we wanted to be as an airport. I mean, at the heart of this, we're, we are a business and we need to be clear as to why customers should choose us versus uh, you know, something else. Uh, the rebranding or the brand identity piece has been underway for about a year. And in fact, you know, we delayed the, the public launch of it, so to speak, to make sure that we had our ducks in a row in terms of some of the promises that need to line up with, with that change, because we didn't, we didn't want it to be just about a logo change. Understand. Uh, just so everybody understands the relationship, because there may be people under the impression that you take your political marching orders from the Minister of Transport in Ottawa. Is that the way it works? No. I mean, that, that is a misconception. First and foremost, we are a private corporation. Uh, so we are completely independent of government. But uh, created by government once upon a uh, time. Yes, so spun off from, you know, at one point, uh, the airports in Canada were run by Transport Canada, and back in the 90s, uh, they elected to spin them off into their own private corporations. So we are a very unique beast, uh, which is a non-share, non-profit corporation. So are you owned by anybody? Uh, no. Uh, so we're effectively accountable to the community we serve, uh, but there, there are no shares. Uh, there's no equity in it. So uh, what do you do when you make a profit? Uh, well, we, we uh, seek to put that back either into our facilities, uh, into reserves, or reduce our landing fees. So, and that, you know, that's, that's the other element of all of this. Is We're going to get to landing yeah, fees in a second. Yeah. The new tagline is, for you, the world. What are you trying to say with that? Well, again, back to our strategy of seeking to be North America's international hub. Uh, you know, at the heart of that is, is you know, we have some real advantages around uh, being able to serve the world. I mean, we have over 180 destinations uh, that we serve from Toronto Pearson, 106 of them being international. And so the world was really to reflect, first and foremost, that we offer the world to, to our customers uh, because of the access we can provide. Uh, but conversely, because of the unique cultural diversity of this region, for anybody coming in through Toronto, we're offering the world in the city and in this region. So that, that world was really to reflect this idea that we really provide that sense of the world, whether you're coming or going from Toronto Pearson. 
And the for you element was really in recognition, and this is a big element of the shift for us as a, as a company, is, is that we are a service provider. It, you know, shifting from just being a mere airport operator, which is at the heart of what we do is run an airport, but we're ultimately here to serve customers. Uh, and that for you was really to, to make that clear that we, we are here to service our customers. So the people you service, you no longer call travelers. That's you, correct. You call them what now? We call them guests. Yes. So, okay. so firstly, we consider ourselves to have two key customers. First of all, our airlines, because our airlines uh, give us about 75% of our revenue. Uh, and they, are, they have choices to make themselves as to where they want to, uh, to fly. Uh, but our other set of customers are our passengers. Uh, and you know, there's very much a symbiotic relationship between airlines and passengers. You can't have one without the other. Uh, but the passenger uh, choice to, to call them guests was really, uh, again, at the heart of our strategy in recognizing that you know, for a period of time, uh, as people travel through our airport, they are in our house. You know, we, we have a very large facility. You have uh, a billion dollar house. Uh, a multi-billion dollar, multi -billion dollar house. Multi-billion dollar house. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and for a period of time, those folks are traveling through our airport. And, and effectively, as it is our host, we are the, uh, it is our, our host, it is therefore we are host. And so it really it, you know, challenges ourselves to think about how do we treat treat these travelers or these passengers as guests. And that really raises the bar of expectation around what we have to do to, su to support them and make sure they have a good ex uh, travel experience. Well, your guests today, I don't have to tell you, are more sophisticated, more demanding, Absolutely. more of everything yeah. than ever. Yeah. Can, can I, and I know it's not simply a rebranding exercise. I appreciate the change in the strategic yeah. point of view as well. Uh, but where the rubber hits the road is where people meet the brand. Can a change in a brand really do for you that which you're expecting it to do. Uh, well, absolutely, but again, it can't, it can't just be viewed about a, just as a as a logo change. At the heart of it, there has to be real proof points of change to that. Such uh, as. So uh, it's about the ease of which you can make your way through the airport and making sure that we have smooth connecting experience. So, and that's a key part of our strategy going forward is that to have, to to make us a place that people will choose to connect through versus other North American airports. So we have to have smooth connecting processes, and there are a lot of changes we have underway to ensure that people can travel through our airport as, as smoothly as possible. And some of those changes will result in our local passengers uh, having you know, a better experience connecting through our airport. Because at the heart of this, people want to have an easy, efficient way to get, get to their plane and, and to get to their final destination. Uh, it's also making sure that we have the right services for them. So retail and dining. I mean, the reality is with today's uh, you know, security requirements, people have more dwell time than they've ever had before. Mm -hmm. And let's give them something to do while, while they're waiting. Do people really shop at airports? Absolutely. I mean, for suits and shirt, clothes and all that kind of the, stuff, the they do, The eh? last three business jackets, I've, the suits that I've bought, I've bought at airports in the, around the world. Because restaurants I get, you know, a drink before you get on the plane I get, newspapers, magazines I get, but people go clothes shopping? Without question. Uh, people are time starved. Uh, and if you can be in another area, you know, be in another country and get some things done, and perhaps shop at a store you didn't have, you wouldn't otherwise have access to, that's 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 absolutely uh, where uh, the leading airports are going around. Because I remember, world. how long has Terminal Three been around for? Is it is oh. it ten years already? Maybe uh, more? Even fifteen? Uh, more than far more than that. Okay. So, and I remember, I think it was Harrods that moved in there, and I remember yes. thinking, Harrods in an airport yeah. terminal, are they really going to be able to do business? Are they there anymore? Uh, they're not. Uh, See, that's what yeah. I wonder. But if you go to, I mean, London Heathrow, which uh, some fondly refer to as a shopping mall with a runway at the end, <laughs> uh, you know, that that is at the heart of their business strategy. And that and that's not, you know, we we're not you know seeking to be that that shopping mall with the runway at the at the end. Uh, but we do know that you know there's an opportunity for people to get things some things done while they're at the airport, uh, and and just allow them to you know, just to to spend their time wisely. And depending on what kind of customer you are, depending on what kind of guest you are, you have different needs. And I think that's another big change for us, is recognizing, you know, we have 32 million passengers, guests travel through our airport every year. They're not all the same. They all have different requirements. Uh, and depending on what your travel purpose is, you may be a suit on the fly, which is one of our customer segments. And when you're a suit on the fly, you, don't ha you are not interested in shopping unless you've lost your, your, your charger <laughs> or you need a new tie. Uh, right. Uh, you're very much focused on you know, staying in the mode of doing business. But if you're an experience seeker, which is another segment who is very much uh, loves traveling, sees the airport as being part of that travel experience, they're very open to different experiences at the airport. Well, let me follow up on that. Because uh, of your 32 million guests, and I don't mean this as a facetious yes. question, I mean this on the level, 
How many of them do you think enjoy the airport experience? I, I would say not as many as we would like to. I mean, the reality is that for many, uh, the airport is something to be endured, generally. Uh, and I don't think we're operating under any illusions that people will you know, all of a sudden decide to design their holiday around coming to our airport. Uh, but uh, it is about ensuring that you know, we see ourselves as being part of that travel journey uh, and that we have a role to play so that travel journey can be as positive an experience as it can be. And we, we recognize now that it's not as positive as it could be at times. You've probably heard this before, but yeah. I hear more and more people saying Pearson is too big, too busy, too crazy, too hectic. If I have a short haul, I'm going to the airport down on the island. I'm going to Billy Bishop. How do you compete with that? Well, we compete on a number of uh, dimensions. Firstly, we're an international airport. But they go to Chicago yeah. so, and Boston. Yes, but then you're connecting through another airport. Uh, and uh, you know, I think, firstly, there is an opportunity. You know, size can be done in a way that is efficient. Uh, you know, I, I've traveled through you know, Munich Airport that is for the seventh year in the row has been uh, awarded best European airport. It is slightly bigger than our airport, uh, and yet it can deliver a very positive, uh, easy experience despite its size. Do you know, know what they're doing that we're not? Well, there are a lot of things that they're doing that, again, I think we're, we're doing a lot of good things today that we're perhaps not creating the awareness of with our guests uh, and, uh, and, or, and or making sure that we're doing it in a consistent way because I think you know, somebody can have a great experience through Toronto Pearson and the next time not have such a great experience. And I think consistency is probably one of the key things that we need to be working on. Uh, you know, they have a great dining and retail experience through Munich. They, you know, they just they have a very easy connecting experience. I will choose to connect through Munich versus Frankfurt any day, uh, because of the kind of connecting experience that they've created. They got a rail link. Uh, they, they, not as as great as it could have it could be. But something. Something. We got nothing. Uh, we'll look forward to that in 2015. <laughs> uh, we're certainly very committed to see that that happens. Okay, a couple of the things you talked about. One of them earlier. Airport taxes and landing fees. Yeah. I'm sure you get a ton of criticism and complaints about yeah. this. Why are they as high as they are still? Well, I think you have to, you have to separate out the landing fee question from the taxes uh, because they're they're very different. Uh, so, firstly, we talked about earlier uh, about landing fees. So, we we are a nonprofit, uh, and without getting into too much detail, we're a residual based. Uh, we have a residual based pricing model. So, whatever our costs are. Uh, we have to recover through landing fees. And, and our goal is to balance that out to zero at the end of the year. Uh, in addition, uh, we can try and offset that by growing our non-aeronautical revenue, such as parking and retail, et cetera. So uh, you know, the costs are ultimately a factor. You know, the landing fees are a factor of cost. And, and you know, over the last 10 to 15 years, we've, we've done some major investment uh, in building the facilities that we have. Uh, and that, you know, that, that, has, that is debt that we have gone to the, you know, we go to the capital markets to raise that debt. Uh, and so we, we have, you know, high fixed costs associated with, with the kind of building that, that we've done. And so we have to recover that through our landing fees. However, over the last four years, we have reduced our landing fees as we continue to look at how we can reduce costs, grow other forms of revenue. Uh, and in fact, last year in 2010, uh, IATA, which is the association that represents all the airlines, awarded us most improved airport in the world. And that was, that was in recognition of our commitment to reducing costs uh, and, and really operating with a very different relationship with airlines, uh, being much more transparent and open about our landing fees and, and, uh, and our commitment to reducing them. But do you go to the Minister of Finance every year around budget time and say, can you please do something about the airport taxes? I hear, you know, I'm getting an earful from our guests yeah. who think they're way too high. Uh, we have we have an on, on you know ongoing dialogue uh, with. Uh, is he listening? Well, you know the the, the government has many priorities to manage. It's got its problems uh, too. Yes, so and I think that's you know that is separate. You know the the, the taxes and the surcharges, uh, aside from our you know the um, airport improvement fee uh, that that comes directly to us. All those other uh, taxes and fees are not not fees that we receive. Uh, that's you know to to you know. To, be used in other ways beyond just what we might receive as, as the airport directly. How about Wi-Fi? Uh, again, it's been pointed out to yeah. me that, that free Wi-Fi was a long time coming in Pearson, Absolutely. longer than it yeah. otherwise should have. How come? 
Well, I think it's part, it is part of the, the transformation that's going on for us as, as a company. I talked about moving from being an air, a mere airport operator uh, in the business of just making sure that people can, uh, and aircraft can take off and land, to being a service provider. And I think as we have become much more focused on listening to our guests, it became apparent that Wi-Fi was something that, that they expected free. Uh, and again, it's all about balancing it out because before that was revenue generating for us. And so that actually allowed us to offset some of our landing fee costs or, or costs that then all translates into landing fees. Uh, but you know, over the last year and a half, we were able to come up with a model that was a sponsorship program so that we're able to, to still manage the cost of it while offering it to, to our, our guests. Uh, Who sponsors the Wi-Fi? Uh, currently, it's Rogers. Rogers. So yeah. they pay for free Wi-Fi at Pearson yes, Airport? Yes, it's, and that's clear. It's, it's compliments of Rogers. So. Gotcha. Okay, with a few minutes left here, let's put a couple of more things on the table. Uh, I guess it's fair to say that when, when a guest comes through Pearson, that's the first impression they may have of Toronto. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a city that we all know yeah, pretty well, yeah. but they may not know it at all. Uh, what role do you feel, as the airport's authority, uh, you play in kind of making sure that that first impression of Toronto is as good as it can be? Well, we, we believe we have a very important role to play. Uh, for those 32 million passengers, we are the first and last impression. And again, that's a shift in, in a mindset for us, uh, and, and we're very conscious of that. Uh, the reality, though, is we're not the only one that delivers that, and I think that's you know, another challenge for us and, and something to be recognized that we, we need to own and deal with, is that we're not the only one delivering the service. So you know, there are 1,100 employees of the GTAA. There are over 30,000 employees who work at the airport. So hmm. multiple companies, multiple organizations that are part of delivering that experience and part of delivering that first or last impression. And the role that we have to play as an airport is to is connect the dots and, and create a, a, per, a broader purpose for why, why everybody should be aligned to thinking about being creating that positive first and last impression. Well, if you're more in the tourism business now than you maybe thought yeah. of yourself before, as opposed to just sort of moving passengers, yeah. How come there's no amusement parts of the airports or art galleries or something like that? Well, you know? there actually there is some of that already. And again, that's part of our, you know, what we need to do a better job of is creating awareness of what is available. So you know, we, we work, um, uh, you, we believe that you, you should have a sense of place when you go through an airport. Uh, and right now, if you landed in Toronto and you didn't quite know where you'd landed, you, I don't know if you'd know that you were in Toronto. So you know, our goal going forward is to bring more of that sense. All that is great about Toronto and the region, because it's not just Toronto Pure, because we serve the broader region, that you have a sense of that coming through our airport. And so you know, one of, uh, we've done a lot of things to, do that, uh, to, to, to support that already. Uh, we have a great uh, uh, permanent art collection that we actually do little to which promote. terminal well uh, principally in t1 but we we have a lot of temporary uh collections mm. uh we also just as an example of our commitment uh, going uh, of what we're uh, the change we're making uh, as part of luminato we had an art installation designed specifically by bruce mao uh, that's up in t1 uh, that he designed for our airport uh, that will stay be at staying beyond luminato uh, we have we work we work with Tourism Toronto to prioritize what are the key events coming that are going to be playing out in the city, and then we fi we're figuring out ways to how to bring that to life in 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 the in the airport. So IFA, uh, the Bollywood uh, Awards mm -hmm. that were just completed, uh, you know that was evident. You coming through our airport over the last week, and even now you'll know. I mean that was a big deal for us as a city and as a region, and we we were very much focused on creating that welcome. So, and you would have seen that in, in a lot of the media last week, that the first, the first story, uh, stories of the, Hollywood, the Bollywood stars was coming through our airport. Uh, and, and we created that fans were able to come in and, and uh, you know, brush shoulders with, with uh, these stars. That was a special occasion, though. Yeah. All things being equal, if you're an international passenger, yeah. which is who you're trying yeah. to attract here, international guest, and you got four-hour layover, what do you do for four hours at Pearson Airport? Well, there's going to be a lot more than they than perhaps historically, but we do. You know, we have we have art, uh, and we will be making sure that it's clear as to where you can find that art and the story behind that. Uh, again, you're going to see a lot more uh, uh, improvement around dining options uh, at, of all variety, from you know somebody who's value based to somebody who actually wants a fine dining experience. And again, something that can represent what the, is the best of the city, as well as offering national brands. See, I don't know if the corollary is right here. You tell me. But yeah. you know, if if you've got to take little kids to a baseball game. Yeah. Baseball is a hard sport to sit through for, you know, for three Absolutely. hours if yeah. you're with a six-year-old yeah. and an eight-year-old or something. And that's why they've got play places yeah. all over the Sky Dome now, so you can go out, take a yeah. break, have them run around, do whatever they want. 
my hunch is you don't have that at Pearson. Should you have that kind of thing at Pearson? We will have we'll have different options because again depending on the kind of traveler if you're an international traveler and you would really just like to sit in a corner somewhere and read a book then no, we've you got can to do that uh, no yes, question yeah. but uh, what, what if you're dragging three miserable kids with you well we're going to have play areas for example so and that's one thing again that we're working on uh, with with some partners to put those play areas in place uh, you know, we have lounges that you, know, you don't just have to be a frequent flyer to be able to access these lounges that allows people to, again, perhaps have a shower if they've got a layover. Uh, and that's something that's available now. We have five of them across, across the airport. Uh, you know, again, we've got, we'll have you know, events going on that are just representing what's going on in the city. For instance, last year for Toronto International Film Fe Festival, we actually had mini theaters where you could watch trailers hmm. uh, for, uh, for, the, the, for the films. Okay. So, we, yeah. we will stand by, Pamela, and, and watch your progress as you rebrand Pearson Airport. Okay, so. well, look forward to seeing you as a guest at some point. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Pamela Griffith-Jones, Chief Marketing and Commercial Officer, GTAA.